Hey guys, welcome to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. Today, I did an amazing episode with Jonathan and Lauren Weathers. They went deep into how they are funding real estate deals and using the, those deals to create passive and active income in your business. You guys are going to love this show. Stay to the end. You're going to love it. Welcome back to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. I have two amazing guests with me today, Jonathan and Lauren Weathers. We are doing a series leading up to Flip Hacking Live this year, which is going to be completely different than anything we've ever done. We analyzed and looked back at what the framework was to actually build wealth and net worth between active and passive income and the relationship between the two. And what we realized was it's actually a very simple thing that we, a lot of us have been doing, but we've just never looked at it through this lens and taught it in a framework. And we're really excited to share it with you this year at Flip Hacking Live. So what we want to do over the next couple of weeks is share with you some of the amazing operators who are running their business and executing on a lot of these strategies and how it all kind of comes together. And today, We've got Jonathan and Lauren who are going to talk about what they're doing in North Carolina with their business and how they're leveraging hard money and other creative ways to fund their deals, to grow their business, to create the impact that they want to create. And I'm Glad really excited yeah, to have you guys really here today. So that. welcome to the show. Okay, I, you guys came into our community this year. I met you guys in Baltimore. I think you are two of the just most amazing people, like real estate, business owner aside. Like I just really enjoyed getting to spend some time with you guys in Baltimore. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how you guys got into real estate, kind of that journey and where yeah, your sure. business so, is I'm now, kind of, kind of what you're so, doing overall. Uh, I would say you'd have to go back probably about 15 years. Um, we've been in real estate 15 years before Lauren and even I were married. Uh, I think we were like dating at the time. Yeah. And, you know, essentially we've, we've done real estate uh, in a very unsexy way. Uh, <laughs> we've done it very, very slow. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think we both would agree if we could go back, we, we would really change nothing that we've done to get to where we're at today. But, Started 15 years ago. Uh, I was working in, in finance at the time. Lauren was finishing up her uh, education degree at ECU. And uh, it was working at the bank that I worked at. I, I kind of was blessed with getting a lot of really good mentors in my life. And a lot of those mentors I had uh, gained uh, were in some segment of real estate. And uh, I understood really quickly the lifestyle that they had, the cash flow that they had. Uh, and I knew really quickly that whatever it took to get that, I was going to be laser focused on making that happen. So, you know, kind of uh, fast forwarding a little bit, you know, we bought some rentals. Uh, first couple of rentals we bought, we we did do loans on those properties. Uh, I think when I started working in finance, I was making like twenty three thousand dollars a year. I was making nothing. Um, and uh, we essentially had to get very creative. I'm working with some local banks to figure out how I could beg them to give me enough money to buy a couple of rentals. Um, so we kind of did the Burr method when, you know, the Burr method didn't really exist at that point in time. So uh, we bought the properties, rehabbed them, refinanced it, did that a couple of times and got enough cash out out of those first couple of properties to then buy another property in cash. And then at that time, we started flipping about what, probably three rentals in, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. we started doing every two and a half flips, we could buy a rental in cash. Two and a half flips, buy a rental in cash. Now, mm -hmm. at that time, it took us a long time to do two and a half flips because uh, we're working, yeah, a real long time. Because <laughs> Lauren and I, we're, you know, we're leaving our jobs, we're, you know, putting coveralls on and we're painting, we're tearing out carpet, we're doing a lot of the work we ourselves. Were the, we were the team. We were the team, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it was very slow, um, did not look cool or feel cool. 
Um, but by age 30, um, we were in a situation with just our cash flow that, that uh, we were both financially able to retire. We did not have to depend on any other income to come in other than the, the passive income we had created. That, that is okay. Mic drop. We can all go. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 well, it turns out that this is a, such a great story because I have that same story or a similar story. Bill has that story. And like we start looking around at the businesses in our community and seven figure flipping and you're like, Amir, you guys remember the presentation Amir yeah, gave? Yeah. Like yeah. we all have this, we all have this story of, we felt called to do real estate. We saw something literally like, that's amazing. I love that lifestyle. I love what it's done for that family. And then we go start to figure it out and it just unlocks so much opportunity. It allows you to, to genuinely make an impact. It, I, it's just like my favorite thing in the world to talk about because it is so powerful. And what I really love about it is what it's, it's powerful for a normal person. Like I too, like you guys was like not making money hand over fist at a job. And I felt called to do something else. And I saw this as a vehicle that would allow me to go where I wanted to go to create legacy, to create impact, of course, to make money, which allows you to do those things and really just to get the freedom that we're looking for. And I bet you guys would attest that while simple, it's not easy and you learn a lot of lessons along the way, but ultimately you build this strong business. So, okay. So you, you get creative, you go to the banks, you get some money, you get proof of concept, create this belief like, wow, we got a rental. We did this thing called the cash out refinance. Like mm-hmm. we actually got money back and we own a real asset mm-hmm. yep. and we paid off a lender. And now this thing is kicking off cash every month that must have been like when you did that first one what did that do for you just i'm thinking the belief that happens you get that check that cash out check and you're like wow that worked talk about if you can remember back then like what that first one felt like once you got the proof of concept yeah well you know uh i think that you know at that time once we were we were kind of in it we were in this season of we're just going to continue to work. And we really didn't have that aha moment until much later. I don't feel like. Yeah. We um, were probably three or four in and yeah. until I've always said, it's not fun to have one rental. Um, Cause you, you, a lot of times you can feel like that one rental just always has problems. And when you're first getting started in real estate, you're going to make mistakes. Um, and I could just, I think all of us that have rentals could just tell like all kinds of stories of tenants and stuff we've had. So we learned a lot through that first yeah, one, right? A lot. And probably about, like you said, it was later it on, was like later, third, third yeah. or fourth. Then we're like, hey, like we've got some extra money now. Yeah. We we could yeah. go and do something if we wanted to. Right? Or or we can have, we always say we used to have the uh, hamburger helper without the hamburger for a little while. Yeah. Uh, we, could, we could afford the hamburger at that point. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> put in, I mean. And really, honestly, we could have had it at that point in time, but yeah. we just chose to live a lifestyle of uh, building, trying to build wealth and not pretend to have it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Which, which is, um, you know, fundamentally, real estate is, is uh, it's not a get rich quick thing, right? It's a, but it is a get rich thing. It is a genuinely a wealth building wealth building tool that's incredibly powerful for a lot of reasons. Yeah, both for um, yes, yeah, uh, financially and our time. Like the, our time has been so important as we've gotten, you know, farther along into the process here. Like mm-hmm. having our time and our freedom has been, you know, almost better than the wealth part. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. We could care less about money. When, when you, st- when you start, yeah, the money, the, the money, it's what the money gets you. Yeah. It buys your time okay. back. It gets you freedom. Yeah. It allows you to do the things that you're genuinely passionate about for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's in the beginning. I think a lot of people think it's about the money, but it's really not about yeah. the money. It's never actually about the money. It's always about what the money allows you right. That's right. to do. That's right. Right. So, um, unfortunately, I think, you know, people, 
look at money and there's a lot of negative connotation around money. Maybe it's because you grew up a certain way or like it was taboo to talk about money or things like that. And then it becomes like this evil thing. But the reality is, is like, it's actually to everyone's benefit to understand it, to understand how it works, to learn how to get it and how to multiply it so that it can allow you not for the money's reason, but for what the money allows you to do. I'm very, very curious. I have an inclination. When you started down this journey and you're buying rentals because the rentals will kick off some passive cash flow, what was your goal along those first couple? Like as you started to think about, hey, I need, I can create passive income. How much passive income or semi passive? You know, passive is the belief you have. You realize it's not. Totally passive and it can be a headache at times, but gets easier over time. So what was the goal at first? Well, I think like you just kind of said it, like you, you do start this with the word money in your head, that that it is about the money. Um, you know, one of my mentors, um, he was in multifamily, still is uh, in multifamily. He had um, he had one complex. He still has it. It's about a 265 door complex. And he uh, he had it set up so that that check was mailed to me at the bank every month and I had to deposit it for him so that I could see the power of what cash flow could do. And I really was focused on that dollar that was on that check, but it was probably several years later, like Lauren said, that we became more focused on the freedom and understanding the lifestyle that this guy had and that that's really what I wanted. I think that probably we could probably marry what two, three years. And I was like, mm-hmm. by age 30, I want to be able to retire. Mm-hmm. And that became the carrot that we, we kind of put out in front of us that by age 30, I want to be able to retire. Um, and that really came the, the driving force for us. Yeah. So it's just really amazing how uh, you guys have grown in your grown your wealth through passive kind of semi passive buying assets. But you guys are also flippers, right? So you have this big active component to your business. I'm curious the relationship between the two. What does flipping do for you or what does it allow you to do? And why even choose to also flip in addition to acquiring rentals? Yeah, so there was a a term a mentor taught me a long time ago that really got us into flipping. He would never explain it to me, um, but I understood it. He told me that uh, you need to find something in life that will create if come so that you can create income. And what I learned that to mean is that you can find things in life that are going to produce some type of if you flip a house, if you make a big sale, um, if you wholesale a property or whatever industry you may be in. A lot of time, if come situations can produce a larger excess of money. Um, And then you use that money to go buy things that produce what we consider to be income, things that just happen, uh, which you, we equivalent equivalent to uh, rentals in our business. So uh, I knew how to remodel a house uh, for rental wise. And I knew I had another mentor, which was actually Lauren's dad. He was flipping some properties. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really easy for me to kind of segment into doing the flips. Um, And so that's what we did. So we learned to take the if come, which would be coming from the flips and take that money and buy something that would produce income. Mm -hmm. The beauty of that is that that is this. There's a couple simple things when it comes to building wealth. You have to increase your active income decrease your expenses. So for a lot of us, regular people, it means living below your means. Yes. And you take the gap between your expenses and your income and you invest it into something that gives you a return. So now your money is working for you. You're not exchanging time for that money in most cases. Super simple concept, literally the path to building wealth. And What's really powerful about what we're doing is you can flip a house in three to six months and get a check between, you know, 20 to 60,000. And in some cases, over six figures 
you say you, when you get a big windfall of money like that, it allows you to go, okay, great. Now I can have that money go work for me over here. And over time you keep doing that and it just stacks up and it stacks up and it stacks up and it buys you freedom because now that money is doing all the work. Like you guys reach your first financial freedom number, right? So like, I think for most people, they feel called. They, they, maybe they make $120,000 a year at a W2 job, which is great, by the way. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Right. And they're like, if I, I need to, I want to spend my time somewhere else with my family, more with my kids. I want to be able to take my kids to school, whatever it may be. And they need to replace that income. They get to, when you can do that, that's like financial freedom level number one. And, it creates this level of, wow, what else can I do? For a lot of people, what else can I do? I learned how to play this game and I'm pretty good at it. I could grow this, not because it's just about making more money. What other impacts can I make, right? So we do a lot of stuff through our seven-figure foundation and all kinds of other impact stuff. But like, that's why. That's why we do this, to make impact, to change lives to it's it's just really cool so well first off i'm really proud of you guys for that because uh, many of us are on this journey together it's just cool to see and be able to socialize with other business owners who are on this this path to freedom Absolutely. and you guys are such a great example of that let's talk a little bit of tactics let's go into how somebody could do this like okay I, I live in a market where I can create cash flow, but like, I don't know how to get money. Like, how does the money part work of this? So can you talk just a little bit about how somebody might fund the purchase of a property, the rehab of a property and what the exit looks like a little bit? Yeah, well, um, you know, so let me kind of start with the exit piece and then I'll kind of work through the other pieces, which are all very important things. but. What I will tell you is that, you know, Lauren's done a really good job instilling to me that anything that we buy, we always have to have multiple exit strategies on that property. Uh, there has to be a, if plan A doesn't work, then there has to be a plan B or a plan C, or not really that we're looking if one fails over the other, but just saying, hey, we've got all these options so that throughout the process, we've got different avenues. And so depending on uh, what, uh, our exit strategies may be is usually going to determine what levers we pull on how we fund those properties now. Mm -hmm. Now, rewinding back 15 years ago, okay. uh, I remember going uh, with Lauren's dad to a Robert Kiyosaki mm -hmm. uh, hotel, you know, one of the uh, conference type deals they have there. And that was the first time that I'd ever heard the term hard money. I mean, I never had heard it. And I remember leaving that and going home and trying to Google hard money uh, because like you say, a lot of people are looking, how do I scratch and get into this game when I really don't know how to get the funding? And that is a large piece of it. Um, and that was me. I mean, I, I told you I was making around $23,000 a year. Um, I was just learning how to spell real estate. Um, and it, I knew it was going to be really hard to try to convince somebody to give me some money. So at that time, that was 08, 09. And when I Googled the term hard money, there was barely anything out there at that point in time. I think there was a, a couple of companies. One was like out of California. They didn't fund in North Carolina. And then the other two companies that I reached out to at that time, you know, in the Carolinas, we could get some really good deals back in 08 and 09. And the dollar amounts that we were looking for were not in the range of what they, they wanted to lend on properties that were several hundred thousand dollars. And that wasn't the game I was looking to play. Um, so, you know, fast forward to today, um, you know, a lot of our deals for many years, we've learned to use our own money. Yeah. Uh, we've used some private money at that point in time, which we didn't even know we were doing private money, but that we were doing it. <laughs> um, we were building funds through other people and other sources. Um, and not till we really came into seven figure, did we really get a connection and start to be able to understand hard money? Yeah. Um, you know, for a lot of people, that's just two words and it's a little bit elusive. Um, but when you're able to connect with others that are in real estate who understand hard money, understand how to leverage those things, 
it can completely transform your timelines and your capability um, and just uh, all the things that you may want to accomplish. But there's really three types of funding to us. We have hard money that we do, what, pri private, money, private money, and then creative financing. Um, and we believe all of those are levers in your business uh, as we've grown to have relationships with people like you, Adam, and others in seven figure, we've learned that nobody's doing 100% hard money. Nobody's doing 100% private. Nobody's doing 100% cre creative financing. Usually the most successful people are learning how to pull those levers back and forth um, to create the flow and growth needed in their business in a very safe way, but very accelerated way as well. Yeah, that's such a good point. So it's like, I want to grow this thing that I'm building and capital is a part of that. What are the options for capital? And can I use a combination of them to do it in a responsible way where I'm never over levered, right? Because you don't want to get over leveraged either. You don't just want to go flood your business with a bunch of money. But as you grow that responsibly, one, okay, I combined this with this and it worked really well for us. It accelerated our timeline. It was funded very fast. The cost of the money was, was fit inside of the deal. And you learn that exact, like exactly how we're, you guys are putting it together. And many of us are putting this together. It, it just, it almost opens up a whole world of opportunities. Like, you feel you're empowered. I can pretty much buy any deal that makes sense for me. There is no, like you don't really think about like, where am I going to get the money? You're, you're looking for the best. Now you become opportunistic on the best deals, yeah. which then creates even more margin in your business because you now know I can buy pretty much anything mm -hmm. and I have the right tool set to do it. So that's so powerful. Thanks for sharing that. And yes, you know, a lot of folks are using hard money. And when we say hard money, that's like a, uh, some, it's, it's not a bank. It's a professional lender that runs a business and they lend to primarily investors. Yes. And then when, when we say private money, that is like person to person. I go to Jonathan. I say, Jonathan, I have a great deal. You have some capital laying around in one of these places. Would you like a return on the money? They like the opportunity. They invest in my deal with me. And there are mechanics and, and specifics on how we do that to make sure it's secured and all that. And I'm sure they'll cover some of this stuff in Flip Hacking Live. And then um, creative finance, which is a whole nother way to, to, to lever. You know, that would be a whole nother podcast we could do. So I won't go into it. But oh, sure. you have these buckets of opportunity and these levers, like you said, which can either give you scale and volume or it can give you massive efficiency mm -hmm. in the opportunities you decide to take. Cause you don't need to do, you don't need to flip a hundred houses a year to get scale. You may be able to even get more profitable, just getting better opportunities and maybe a few more a year. It's not always about doing the egotistical numbers. Like I did 200 flips this year, although there are plenty of people to do that. And there are even some, you know, volume guys in our community. Some people are doing great doing 15 luxury a year. Yeah. You know, some people are great doing 12 flips a year. We've got a lot of people doing 30 to 50 flips a year that are completely satisfied. So, but you can't do that if you don't have the right tools to do it. I'm and sure. you guys have, done it the right way. You built it over time. You've learned tons of lessons. You're coming to the community. You guys are complete value add to everybody around you. You have such great experience. And of course you come here and you're like, Oh, cool. Look, they're, they're levering like this. They use hundred percent purchase price hard. And then they use this other money. Oh, it's brilliant. Like we'll, we'll add that one little thing and it just helps your business so much. So I'm super grateful to have you guys. And I cannot wait to see what you got. I can't wait to see your presentation at Flip Hacking Live. I think people are going to get a ton out of like seeing that. Like what is the model? Cause everybody looks at you and they'll listen to this. They go, but they've been doing it for a long time. How do they do it? Well, you're going to show them a model that they can employ in their business to do that and grow business. And maybe one day 
They can have a really cool office like you guys have. I would love to come there and work. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. I'm actually in um, Tulum, Mexico at this recording. So wow. that's great. But I would rather be in that office. That office looks amazing. I don't know. I think we might rather be in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, really guys. I, I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing this presentation at Flip Hacking Live, talking about multiple exit strategies, how to how to kind of analyze and choose your exit strategy, how you're levering, what money you're using, how you're doing it responsibly. Like, I'm really, really, really excited to see that, and I'm so grateful that you guys could come on here today and spend some time with us. Um, where can people find you? Like, are you guys, uh, so, are you guys social media? Are you guys big social yeah, media we're, people? We're working on it. Um, so we have our, per our personal pages right now. And then we have our main business page, which is true quality homes. Um, and so we're, we're working on those things. That's one of our goals. True quality year. homes. Check true them out. Homes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we just want to say that we appreciate being on the podcast. Like this is such an opportunity and we're so thankful for the group and just the opportunities that we've had in the group. So. Yep. And we love you guys. You guys are our people. So, um, you guys are awesome. Well, I'll say this. I thank you guys for making this happen today. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I think what you guys are doing is making a difference and your abundance, your willingness to share and, and trade, uh, trade secrets with the community and others is, is so clear to me. You guys are just amazing people. I'm so happy to have you and thanks for doing this today. Yeah, absolutely. So it's our pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. So if you like what we did in this podcast today and you're excited to hear the very, the specifics of how the people in our community are building wealth through real estate, flipping houses, buying assets, and you want to learn more detail, you have to come to Flip Hacking Live October 10th to 12th. Just go to fliphackinglive.com. It's literally the cost of a dinner. And it can change your life over three days. Now, if you commit to coming, you need to commit to coming. Show up. Play all out. Invest in yourself. It's, it will be, I promise you, one of the best decisions you ever made. I will see you October 10th to 12th. Just go to fliphackinglive.com and join us for the best real estate event of the year.